The decline of Subway. In 2013, Subway controlled 41% of the limited service sandwich market in America. Subway's business strategy focused on store growth, which helped it to become the largest fast food franchiser in the world. How did the company lose its way and let its market share slide to 28% by 2020? In this video, we'll explore the five reasons, including scandals and controversies, why the submarine sandwich chain lost momentum and shuttered thousands of outlets. Our channel is dedicated to making business videos that introduce business concepts that might be helpful to you. In this video, we'll look at the importance of a company's stakeholders in striving for win-win situations. We'll also see the benefits and costs of virtuous and vicious cycles. How Subway Got Its Beginnings Subway did not invent the sub sandwich. However, it was mostly responsible for the sub sandwich franchise industry. In the 1960s, a 17-year-old named Frank DeLuca came up with the concept of healthy, fast food. It was also a means for him to pay for medical school. So he persuaded his buddy, nuclear scientist Peter Buck, to give him $1,000 in 1965. DeLuca opened Peter's Super Submarines in Bridgeport, Connecticut with the money and the support of his mother. The name was then changed to Peter's Submarines and eventually shortened to Subway. DeLuca's vision has always been quick expansion. So, after establishing his first business, he worked hard to expand to surrounding areas. By 1974, the first Subway franchise was opened outside of Connecticut. Subway had a lot going for it. For starters, it was the only fast food business that served anything other than burgers and fries. Furthermore, DeLuca thought that site visibility was critical, hence the majority of locations were in prominent areas and city centers. The menu at Subway allowed for flexibility and ingredients that worked in various areas. As a result, both local and foreign growth continued. Subway expanded from 100 stores in 1978 to 1,000 stores by 1987. In 1990, the figure had risen to 5,000. Subway symbolized a better way of living. The mere possibility of adding additional veggies was unheard of. They also made the sandwiches smaller. Subway marketed as a healthy option, and it was brilliant. The Globe aspired to be healthy in the 1980s and 1990s. As a result, the popularity of healthy meals increased over the decades. DeLuca and Buck made it inexpensive to launch a franchise. A Subway franchise costs around $200,000 to start. McDonald's franchise fees range from $1 million to $2.2 million. So in Subway's heyday, starting a franchise was attractive even though ongoing franchise fees were higher than other fast food chains. By 2003, Subway became the largest franchiser in the world, even larger than McDonald's, with over 30,000 stores. Nothing appeared to be able to stop Subway. Furthermore, the company had brilliant marketing initiatives. In 2003, a franchisee saw his outlet filled with hungry college students during the week. However, on the weekends, it was deserted. So he introduced $5 footlongs on weekends. It was a huge success. Other companies, such as McDonald's and Wendy's, imitated it. During the 2008 Great Recession, customers flocked to the $5 footlong, propelling Subway's popularity across the country. But it was one ad in particular that propelled Subway to new heights. Jared Fogel, a 425-pound university student, began eating at Subway in 1998 for three reasons. Number one, it was close to him, so he didn't have to go far. Number two, the meals were extremely inexpensive and tasty. Number three, they were more nutritious than other fast foods. He shed more than half of his body weight, 245 pounds, in less than a year. The campus newspaper ran a story on him that caught the attention of men's health. Fogel was included in the section, Stupid Diets That Work. Regardless of the negative title, Subway leapt at the opportunity. Jared Fogel was nearly perfect. He was just a regular guy who had gotten healthy on Subway sandwiches alone. Jared even showed off his old, huge, 60-inch waistline pants wherever he went. Subway had a great time riding the Jared wave. He was so famous that when ads featuring him were temporarily halted in 2005, sales fell 10%. However, by 2010, Fogel had gained 40 pounds and appeared to be lost. Subway exploited this opportunity and encouraged him to run in the New York City Marathon. Jared completed the marathon, but said he would never do it again. Still, the news was a big success for Subway. Its phenomenal expansion during the 1990s and into the Great Recession elevated it to a level shared by a few other franchisers. By 2013, it held 41% of the limited service sandwich industry, placing its market share on par with McDonald's. Even this understated its dominance. 
given that the limited service sandwich category included other sandwich chains such as Panera Bread and Arby's. Within this submarine sandwich subcategory, Subway dominated like few others. Subway slide. That is no longer true. 2013 and 2014 marked the beginning of Subway's long decline. Sales fell 3% in 2014 and cumulatively another 13% by 2020. Its market share dropped from 41% in 2013 to 28% by 2022. Subway shuttered 5,000 stores since 2015 and thousands more are expected to follow suit. Now, Subway's 28% share of the limited service sandwich industry is significantly lower than in other fast food categories. For instance, McDonald's controls 47% of the burger industry, which has seen a slew of new entrants in recent years. Chick-fil-A was less than half the size of KFC 15 years ago, but now maintains a leading position with 41% of the chicken market. Five reasons why Subway fell. Here are the five reasons why Subway has stumbled badly. Number one, sexual scandals. In 2015, Jared Fogel was accused of underage sex, which resulted in his arrest and conviction. According to documents, Fogel sought underage sex from a Subway employee in 2008. The employee reported him, but the company did nothing. According to reports, the company suppressed concerns about Fogel's conduct, like propositioning children at Subway events. Unfortunately, Frank DeLuca, Subway's founder, also has a shady reputation. He was known for pursuing employees' wives and girlfriends. According to one source, if you have a skirt and a pulse, he'll chase you. Fred also distributed calendars with half-naked male executives, including himself, to the staff. The Subway brand suffered massive damage. Number 2. Questionable food quality The Eat Fresh slogan claimed that Subway dishes were healthier than other fast food. Consumers expected Subway's food to be healthy and created with natural, high-quality ingredients. Unfortunately, CBS Marketplace revealed that Subway's meats were saturated with soy and other byproducts. Surprisingly, DNA testing indicated that only 53% of oven-roasted chicken and 46% of teriyaki strips were chicken meat. Subway would later sue CBS, but the harm had already been done. Freshness was another problem. Previously, franchisees were allowed to order local vegetables on a regular basis. However, to reduce costs, Food shipments were limited to once a week for most outlets. Customers frequently complained toppings were wilted and faded, while employees stated some foods were occasionally nearing expiry. Subway was destroying the exact factors that made the company successful. Unfortunately, its competitors had significantly higher quality sandwiches with lettuce that wasn't a week old. Moreover, Subway dishes were high in carbs, salts, sugars, and other unhealthy ingredients. This also tarnished its eat fresh reputation. Number 3. Successful New Entrance When Subway initially debuted in town, it was the sole national chain. However, by 2021, competitors such as Jimmy John's, Jersey Mike's, Firehouse Subs, and Quiznos have taken chunks out of the sandwich business, leaving Subway with a smaller slice of the pie. Jimmy John's sales in the United States have increased 31% since 2013. The sales of Jersey Mike's have skyrocketed. Firehouse Sub sales have nearly doubled in that period. Subway has an antiquated product. They should have updated its menu to compete with the new upstarts. Instead, its menu stayed nearly untouched for two decades, with the company obsessed with outlet expansion. Number 4. Flawed Rewards Program The Subway My Way Rewards Program, which debuted in 2018, claimed that returning customers would receive $2 for every $50 spent. Immediately, technical faults and many data-gathering vulnerabilities were found in Subway's mobile app, which left a bad taste in customers' mouths. Number 5. Botched Pandemic Response The COVID epidemic sent shockwaves across the global economy, with the already struggling subway business amongst the most impacted. Subway's corporate arm opted to waive the 8% royalty fee for its franchisees, but only for a few weeks, resulting in a backlash against the company. Many subway franchisees were forced to resort to the government for assistance, while some chose to close their stores forever. But these factors point to a bonus reason, the root cause of Subway's problems. Number 6. Weak Leadership and Greed Frank DeLuca had no vision for the future and no succession plan. He was obsessed with growth. Subway actively encouraged franchisees to open more stores to generate more income for the company. The new stores were frequently too close to existing ones, resulting in sales cannibalization. 
As the number of outlets continued to expand, sales per store in many areas shrank. We saw in our Pizza Hut video that the hut went in the opposite direction and slowed its delivery business to avoid cannibalization for its franchisees. While that decision was good for its franchisees in the short term, it was detrimental for Pizza Hut in the long run. On the other hand, Subway should have prioritized increasing sales per store instead of opening new outlets and is now suffering for that mistake. Another flashpoint was Subway's corporate headquarters decision to reinstate the $5 footlong. 400 franchisees were outraged. While the menu item would help to drive traffic, franchisees feared it would siphon sales away from more profitable items. News of unhappy franchise owners spread, which made it difficult to track new franchisees. Additionally, Subway had been accused of mistreating its staff, further tarnishing the company's brand image. Employees were said to be underpaid as well as overworked. Subway also failed to pay for overtime in accordance with federal law, which required time and a half. DeLuca's death proved to be an issue too. Allegations circulated that his widow and partner were anxious to cash out. Subway has gone through several CEOs to halt the slide. John Chitse, a cutthroat former Burger King executive, is the most recent CEO. Many Subway store owners blamed the company's downfall and closures on Chitse's inadequate leadership. With Chitse in charge, Subway laid off 500 corporate employees, increased franchise startup expenses, and introduced menu items that flopped. He had disagreements with franchisees about his vision for the firm. When Subway was growing, it was enjoying a virtuous cycle. Increasing sales resulted in lower unit costs and bigger advertising budgets to fuel further growth. However, as it oversaturated markets, unprofitable stores had to close. The company then faced a vicious cycle as dropping sales created diseconomies of scale, rising unit costs and shrinking ad budgets resulting in lower profits and further declining sales. From ineffective and greedy leadership to multiple controversies, the Subway brand is spiraling down. Is this a sign that Subway as a restaurant chain is on its way out? Maybe not. Subway remains a giant. It outsold Panera by $3 billion and Arby's by $4 billion in sales. Subway retains significant brand awareness. Subway may rise again if it refreshes its brand, modernizes its menu, and responds to its customers, franchisees, and employees. What do you like and dislike about Subway? Do you think they can make a comeback like McDonald's? Please comment below. Thank you for watching our video. Before you head out, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click on the bell icon for more videos like this one. And before we sign off, here's another interesting business video you might like.